how much does a pound weigh? Sounds easy, right? Well, we'll tell you the correct answer right after this. Hey YouTubers, this is JNB, and welcome to our JB Coins family. We're all about coins and currency. We have new videos every day and are here to help you either start your new collection, expand an existing one, or maybe find that one valuable coin that can change your life. Now in this short video, we will show you exactly how much a pound weighs, its history, and some funny things that come from its use. Confused yet? Well, one of the things we always talk about in our videos is weighing your coins. And here we have one of our scales, which we're going to turn on. Reason why? Well, reason is we're talking about a British one pound 1986 coin but not just any coin and not just any pound so we're going to talk about the one pound coin silver from Great Britain the slang and various terms we've come to use in our coin collecting that derive from the pound. Now this awesome coin that you see is a 1986 United Kingdom silver proof Piedford one pound coin flax plant coin. The flax plant is the name of this plant that is sculpted on the reverse. And you can see I'm wearing my white gloves. <laughs> you'll see why in a re in a you'll see why in a second. So we take this coin out, and the first thing you notice is it's chunky. That's a Piedford. It's a really thick coin. Okay, so we turn the scale back on, slide it down here. There we go, it's zeroed out. And it weighs exactly 19.17 grams. Now that's how much this pound weighs. And believe it or not, this little coin, which is about the same diameter as an American nickel, but quite a bit chunkier and made out of silver <laughs> this pound that's how much this pound weighs and it's worth about seventy dollars us in its current currently in its condition this is a beautiful coin you can see the mirrored fields this is the flax plant, and that's the British crown, and you can see the roots of the flax plant growing through the crown. Now, they don't do the coin flip like we do this way. They do the metal turn, which is this way. There's the queen, 1986, much younger version, but not the young version. That would have been back in the 50s and 60s. The other cool thing is when this coin was issued, it came with this pretty cool airtight, which is different from what we're used to here in the States. We'll show you that in a second, but it also came in a very nice commemorative box because this was a commemorative coin. Okay. They are becoming pretty hard to find even without the box like this one. You can find them in the box, the original packaging, but uh, for pretty much the same money, but they're really getting hard to find. Now, technically, 
This is a 1986 Northern Ireland flax plant, silver proof, one pound coin. It's the third in a four coin series featuring the national emblems of the great of the countries of Great Britain, and it's struck in 0.925 sterling. That's where the expression came from. Sterling, one pound sterling. 0.925 sterling, and this is a pound. The edge is not only milled, or as we call it, reading, but it's also inscribed. The inscription that you can see here, another reason why I'm wearing the gloves, Oh, these things are hard to hang on to, even with these gloves. Okay, so the inscription is Decus et Tutamen. That's the best I can do with Latin. This may be translated as an ornament and a safeguard. Now, this inscription dates back to the very first machine-struck coins that were minted in 1662 and was a device to prevent clipping. And it was used on the first pound coin that was made in 1983, three years before this one. Now clipping was something that back in the day when people would go and bring their gold in and have it stamped into coins or have it assayed, you know, at the assay office, the the person weighing the, the coin, if this was a smooth edge like a lot of them were back then, they didn't have the milling or reading. The Brits call it milling, we call it reading. What they would do is they would clip or shave a little piece of silver or gold off the edge, this edge, okay? And they would put it in a little jar or bowl off to the side. And over time, the person weighing these coins and creating these coins for people would accumulate enough silver or gold to make their own coin. So that was called clipping. Or basically stealing, okay? It's also where the expression shaving came from, you know, shaving points, shaving, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, there's a whole lot of different expressions in the American lingo um, that have to do with people um, skimming, <laughs> you know, all kinds of all kinds of things. And they all go back to this idea from 1662. Okay. Now on the edge of the coin is also a mint mark. But it's not a mint mark like we're used to. That is the mint mark. It's a cross. Now, the cross is the Lanstrasant mint mark. It's a cross crosslet. This is the first United Kingdom coin to be struck with this struck with this distinctive feature. The shape of the cross alluding to Lanstrasant was which translated from the Welsh means church or parish of the three saints. So, there's a lot of cool history in this little tiny coin. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's cool. It's chunky. So now, I'm going to put it in here in the, coin, in, the, in the airtight. I'm going to show you guys how cool this thing is. You put that in the airtight like that. And then instead of just snapping it on, you screw it down. And it's only a couple of turns, and it's nice and tight. No shaky shake. It's, it's airtight, okay? So now I can take these white gloves off and I can handle this thing like that. Okay. So now I want to give you guys some cool stuff. First off, in March 2017, this type of circulated round pound was replaced by the 12-sided one pound coin. Now, those of you that collect Great Britain coins, uh, or occasionally you've seen them, maybe by chance in your change, you've seen these 12-sided coins and 
you know, they got the queen on there. That was the coin that replaced these. But this is not the only form that the pound takes, nor the only name it has. You know, leave it to the Brits, man. You can't do anything simple, right? But like I said, that's, you know, there's so many things that have evolved from this coin, and some of it starts right here. The pound sterling, which is what we are used to hearing, say, in a James Bond film, you know, something like that, known to some simply as the pound or sterling, is the official currency of the United Kingdom and its territories. Now, the pound sterling, interestingly, is divided into 100 pence, or pennies. Beginning to sound familiar? Pennies. Now, hardcore U.S. numismatists will get on your case, just like the uh, grammar police, if you call a United States penny a penny. To them, that ain't a penny, that is a cent. This is a hundred pennies. Okay, whatever floats your boat, right? So, back to our coin. So, how many types of pounds are there? Well, actually, in the British economy, there are, and I can't put it down like that because it's so shiny, it actually blinds the camera. There we go. Right now, there are actually five different denominations of banknotes that are in circulation. Currently, they have pound sterling and they have banknotes. The 5, 10, 20, and 50 pound notes are out there. There are also one pound notes, but they are very rare because they're printed in Scotland. Now, for some more slang. We've all watched some British movies, TVs, seen some of our favorite actors. From England, use the term quid. <laughs> we use it in our language too, but it means something else. Or we derive it from something else. But they actually come together, again, in this coin. And the terms used for pound sterling. A quid is the slang expression for the British pound. A quid equals 100 pence. Remember, 100 pence equals a pound. It's believed to have come from the Latin phrase quid pro quo, which translates into something for something. That's what we're used to here in the States. Quid pro quo. Somebody did something for somebody else, usually talking about politicians with payoffs, things like that, where one guy does something for the other guy. Maybe there's money, maybe there's not, and it's a quid pro quo. And if it is, somebody's going to jail. <laughs> so again, here we are. We're back to the pound, and we got people going to jail because of quid pro quo because of the quid <laughs> you know but in the movies you'll hear you know brits saying uh hey that's you owe me 50 quid or give me five quid that's what they're talking about give me five pounds give me 50 quid uh 50 50 pounds so what's the difference between an english pound and a quid <laughs> there apparently actually is a difference the difference is very simply the pound and the quid is that the pound is the official currency under the metric system that's in use in many countries such as the United Kingdom, England, and its territories. Whereas the quid is only a slang term to be used for the currency known as the pound. Get it? <laughs> Got it? Good. Okay, so kind of a silly video, but the cool thing is that the history 
from this one little coin or what it represents and going back to the 1600s and clipping coins or shaving coins or skimming off the top um, and its connections to those phrases here in the States going back probably to the beginning of the country. And things like um, pennies and cents and all the different things that, that we talked about in this video that all kind of are tied together in the history of this one little coin or even not just this one little coin, but just the term the pound or the quid. And things, these, these words that we've heard probably our whole lives and never really necessarily understood or knew the origins or how those words in British English came into the American lingo, more slang, uh, that we use every day. So the next time you're watching, you know, The, the Godfather or something, and they're talking about, you know, uh, the vigorous or skimming, you know, or taking their cut. That's where it came from. <laughs> so we hope you liked this video. We hope you enjoyed the fun of this video and the history and that you found it helpful. And if you did, please like, share, and subscribe so we can create more videos for you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.